Okay, come on up. Yay. All right, let me adjust this real quick first. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and this dream was just recently, and it mimics, it mimics what's like in real life as far as our, we have family property that's been passed down at least four generations, and our whole road is like our family. And so in the dream, it was like that, but instead of the person, whoever they were, <laughs> instead of them going down the road, they were going down one of, it was the left side of the property instead. And um, he passed through our cousin's property, what would be my sister's property, and what would be my property. And then he goes to my parents' property, and it's a black, black vehicle. And because it's our family road, if anybody's not family, it brings a lot of attention. <laughs> so in the dream, it was like that. It's like, who, who's coming? And so I, I look, and then I watch, and he, he passed through my property, and he backs up like this um, in my father's building, like hidden. And there was a big man, and he was like on guard like this. And so I'm going toward him to see who he is. And I didn't know if that man was on my side or his side in the dream, but I'm hoping he's on my side. <laughs> so I asked him, I said, where did the man go? And he told me, and he said, the man went this way. And so in the dream, I felt concerned. So I ran toward my father's house, and there was some guns that looked like 20-gauge guns, uh, like three of them lined up on the, the porch on the post. So I, I went in, but I was just too focused because I didn't know what was going on. So I went quickly, and he had a handgun, and he had it pointed to shoot my dad. And in the dream, I remember thinking, I might get killed, but I have to protect my father. And I told the man to stop, and he was going to shoot anyway. So he, t he pointed it toward me to shoot me, and then I woke up. Okay. What, wait, oh, just sorry. a second. Let me make sure we got this dream. <laughs> All right, so you're, you're on the property that you actually live on, which is kind of family property, multiple yes. properties that are all on one big plot of land. And the road goes down, and you see a car driving, but they're not actually driving on the road. They're actually driving through the fronts of your yards. Yes. And they go through the property next to yours, go through yours, go to your parents' property. Yes. And you go out and curious, like, what's going on? Who's here? Because this, you know, this, we don't recognize this vehicle. Mm -hmm. And you see him back into one of the outbuildings that you're on your father's property, kind of like he's trying to hide his car. Yes. And, and a quick getaway, because he, he reversed back. Reversed like, back so he could just drive yes. straight out. That's okay, good catch. Okay, and so then you um you run over there and you see this big strong man standing like he's on guard and you're mm -hmm. thinking, I hope he's on my side. Yes. And you just ask him, where did that man go? And he points towards your father's house. Yes. And so you go off running towards your father's house. Yes. And as you go towards the front door, you notice three 20 gauge guns that are just leaning up against the railing on the porch. It's in the back though. Oh, in the he, back, the back Because we have porch. property, yeah, the, the porch is in the front and the back on the house. Okay. So this is on the back. This is the he, back he door. He went the back way. My okay. dad was sitting in a recliner, so he had to go through the kitchen, through the dining, to get to the living room. So he snuck in the back way and went like this, where my dad was sitting in the recliner, to shoot him. Okay, so, so you go in, you see the three guns, you leave them there because you're, you're in such a hurry. And when you come in, you see this man with a gun pointed at your dad, and you know he's going to shoot him, and you're thinking... It, I might get killed, but I've got to try to stop this. Yes. And so you, you tell him, stop. And he goes to point the gun at you, and that's when the dream ends. I do remember this, though. He, there must have not been enough bullets for the barrel, because he did shoot once, and the, no bullet fired. And then he went to shoot it again. I do remember that okay. part now. And, and that's when I woke up. And pointed at you. Yes. He shot, but nothing happened, and he was the going to shot. shoot it again. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. So go ahead. Take a moment. 
Find a title for the stream, find your focuses, find your sub-focuses, find your details. And when you're ready, come back and we'll tell you what we got here at the lab. So quick question for the dreamer. In the dream, the, the guns that were on the back porch, the three guns that were sitting there, did you have a feeling like they were your family's guns or were they the intruder's guns or they were just, you just noticed guns? Okay. Okay, so in the dream, the dreamer sees these guns and they don't know whose guns they are, but they know that they have to be loaded to be used and they're in such a hurry to take care of the family that they don't stop to figure out how to get them loaded and go in. All right, are we ready? <laughs> no, we're not ready. We'll pretend to be ready by the time we put the diagram up. Now, some of you had an immediate sense of a basic interpretation, and you were probably right. So we're going to go through and we'll, we'll do the diagram but the reality is, is doing the diagram is just going to fill in some of the circles. The, the, there's a basic sense of the interpretation um, that, that most of you already got. But let's start with the title. What, what are we going to title this one? Isaiah 54, 17. Stranger danger. Family under attack. Let's do family under attack. Carmen, that's great application. <laughs> okay, so who or what's our focus? The dreamer. Now, this is an interesting one because the dreamer's being affected, but it's almost like the dreamer's participating. but there's nobody else with a lot of action. So we're gonna leave this as the dreamer, but we're gonna realize that because it's affecting the whole family, it's really about the whole family, even though the dreamer is specifically involved. Okay, what are our, our major sub-focuses? The properties? I guess that's an SF. We don't need two focuses. And, and I'm going to put man so I don't have to spell out intruder. It's easier to write. And we'll put the black van as a detail. Black vehicle. It wasn't van, but it was a black vehicle. Like a muscle car. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, get rid of that. It's a real car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are our other? Yeah, the father is very important. Father be sub-focus. Yeah, the other man. Where would we put the other man? It's kind of off of properties because he's on the outbuilding, right? It's kind of hard to figure out where, where to put him, but we'll, we'll put strong, strong man. It's a detail. Anything else? The guns in the porch. It's a detail. What about 
the urgency. Yeah, that, that'd be a detail probably off of the dreamer. Anything else essential? The misfire. So, okay. Now, if you figured out what all of these details are, you probably spent too long on the details. Because this dream is, it's very, very simple. There's, there's going to be some details that are helpful, but the dream itself is very, very simple. What do, what does the properties represent? The family. It's about something that's going on in the family line. Okay? Who's the man? This man. The intruder. It's an enemy. It's, it's a demonic attack. All right? It's a demonic attack against the family line. Right? There's the guns. Three guns in the back porch. Guns represent authority. Right? Guns represent authority. So there's authority to deal with it, but it's not ready. It's not prepared. Right? The, the back door. Why the back door? Because it's an issue from the past. It's not, it's not just a current issue. This is a recurring issue in the family. This is about a generational line issue. Something that's happening in the generational line. Right? Seems like it's coming after the father. But when the dreamer tries to deal with it, comes after the dreamer. Right? A misfire. What's that talking about? Grace, but it looks like it's, it has authority to hurt her, but it, but it doesn't. The authority is removed. It's, it's not real authority to hurt her. All right, so how would you put that all together to communicate it to the dreamer? Who wants to go? Nancy, you got this one? Awesome. So here comes an issue okay. with the interpreter because I've worked so many years in deliverance. I'm seeing a lot of, I mean, the generational right. curse. Well, that's why I invited side. you up to come okay. interpret this dream. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would get this dream really well. Okay, so... I mean, just what it looks like to me is that there is a generational curse coming out of the line of the father. You, we don't know what the strong man is. The strong man needs to be identified. What is the curse to do something about it? And only she or the father has authority to take care of the strong man of this curse. A strong man is usually in the curse. The lineage is usually a strong man usually has to do with addictions, alcoholism, things like that. A strong man. Okay, so question. Uh -huh. In this dream, strong man? Uh -huh. Was this strong man good or bad? Did it help or hinder? It didn't make a difference. It, I, it didn't see it helped. I didn't I it, didn't catch all of the dream. Okay, so in in this dream, the the she sees the car back into the outbuilding and then as she's going to figure out what's going on with the car, she sees the strong man in front of the outbuilding. Okay. And she's like, is this guy good or is this guy bad? Where did the where did the intruder where did the attacker go? And he points her exactly in the direction of the attacker. Okay. So that is angelic help, not okay. demonic not, resistance. Okay. Right. So see, there's right. I know. In lies, so, yeah. so now go back and say it again. Okay. So there is a generational curse coming out of the father's. You know that side of the family. It's not maternal. It's paternal uh, intrusion. Okay, Th that's what I kept questioning. Did she call the, the man an intruder? Because an intruder has no legal ground to be there. Okay, right. but if it's not an intrusion, that means it has legal ground to be there. It has legal right to be there. There's an open door somewhere in the lineage. Okay, so plot of this story. This is a great teaching moment. 
plot of this story. Mm -hmm. The driver, the car goes across the property, doesn't go on the road. What's the difference between going on the property and going on the road? The road would be appropriate access on the property would be inappropriate. Inappropriate access. The violating boundaries. So it's an intrusion. It has an no intrusion. legal right to be there. Right. Yes. Which is why there's okay. a misfire. Oh, I got That's okay. the reason for the misfire. Okay. Like I said, I never, I couldn't totally piece it together, but I was getting, you know, right. some stuff about it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So start over. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here's your dreamer. She's right there. Tell okay. her the meaning of her dream. So the meaning of your dream is, is that there is intrusion going on and it's coming from a generational issue. And it's just that it's an intrusion. It doesn't have any legal right to be there. You have authority over this, over this intrusion. Um, I, something I didn't quite understand about that you kept trying to protect your father. I, I thought it should have been the other way around. Why isn't the father protecting you? Okay, now, so now so, you're taking natural knowledge and putting it in the dream. Okay. So if you tell, if you tell the interpretation the way the dream goes, mm -hmm. is you, you've recognized an illegal attack against your family line. You've seen how it's come against your father, and you've stepped in to try to do something about it. It came after you, but it hasn't had the authority to actually harm you yet. Okay. Okay. So see, I couldn't. Pe I still couldn't right. piece that all together in my mind. But you, you did okay. really well. Okay. Cool. You did okay. really well. So, so I'm going to ask a question. You said we kept questioning that you said that what was going on in the dream was something that was being mimicked in the natural. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Why don't you Sorry. come up to the mic so that people can hear? <laughs> Let me step away from the mic. <laughs> the part I was referring to, to mimicking, was that really is how our family property is. And this, um, I'm Cajun, like heritage wise, and the way that works a lot of times, uh, property is passed down from generation to generation. And um, so like when my parents pass away, I will have property on both sides. And so this is my father's property. And this, I, as far as I know, it's at least been passed down four generations. I don't know how far it's gone, but that's the part I was referring to mimicking because where he was passing in the dream, like it's all my first cousins, aunts, like the whole road, all of this was actual like in the dream, like you could see the, the homes, you could see everybody's property. But to answer the other question you had, it was like the focus I had was when I was 18 years old, we had a, a home and our house burnt down. And I, we were all in the house when it did happen. And um, there was smoke and fire and I was the first one that woke up. And in the dream, I mean in real life, <laughs> in real life I was dreaming like I was sleeping and I woke up to this noise and I was just very focused and I woke up and I got everybody out of our house and we left and then our house was to the ground in minutes. And so we were just rescued, but that was it. <laughs> and so in the, when I woke up, it was like a scary feeling, but it felt exactly how when I was 18 and our house burned down. Like, when that happened in real life, I was so focused and it was just like, I was like getting out my family like boom, boom, boom. And then we were out of there and then it was burnt. And in the dream, it was like that. I was just focused and I was like, I got to get to my father. I got to get to my family, yeah. whoever he's going to hurt. So it yeah. was just that intensity. Yeah. Very right. good. Very good in that. And that also is part of the, part of the dream because that's the intensity you're going to go after the spiritual attack with mm -hmm. because you've been given the authority to deal with it to protect your whole family line. That's awesome. That's good. Carmen, come on up. Okay, so application level. So that, 
um, the, the question is with, with an application level for this particular dream, could this be also talking about the dreamer's authority in the body of Christ, or is it specifically talking about the, the family line, the dreamer's family? A couple of the clues you've got is, is in this dream, the dream is, is all about, it's exactly like it is in real life. It's exactly like it is in waking life. You, you have that, that feel. There's no metaphor to the property. And because of that, you're going to tend to think it's probably literal. So most likely, it's going to be a literal thing because, it, because of that, how literal that is. The whole setting, everything was exactly the way that it was. So there's nothing to, to pull a metaphor into that. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that it's impossible, but it just means that it's, it's, it's unlikely. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>